The Crato Formation was part of a large, interconnected system of lagoons and reefs, surrounded by a diverse range of plants and trees. The reefs were home to a variety of marine organisms, including corals, sponges, and shellfish. On land, the forests surrounding the lagoons were home to a variety of animals. It was complex and diverse, with a wide range of species occupying different niches within the environment. It was a rich and vibrant ecosystem that has provided scientists with valuable insights into the biodiversity of the early Cretaceous period. Araripenemphs were relatively small insects, with 5 cm wingspan. They had large, elongated wings with intricate veins and markings, and their bodies were elongated and slender. The head was large and dominated by a pair of large compound eyes, which would have provided excellent vision for hunting and avoiding predators. Grassalepteryx is known for its unique and specialized feeding habits. It had elongated mouthparts that were adapted to piercing and sucking, similar to those of modern-day mosquitoes and horseflies. However, instead of feeding on blood like those insects, it likely fed on the bodily fluids of other insects. Macarcinia was an important member of the Pachycormidae family and its unique jaw adaptation provides valuable insights into the evolution of feeding strategies in bony fish during the Mesozoic era. The most striking feature of Cratosalpiga was its pair of large, scissor-like calissari, which would have been used to capture and subdue prey. It also had a pair of pedipalps that would have been used to manipulate food and other objects. The dorsal fin of Cladocyclus which was positioned towards the rear of the body and had a unique shape that resembled a sickle or crescent. This shape would have provided stability and control during swimming, allowing it to move quickly and maneuver efficiently. Destilbi had a streamlined body, which would have allowed it to swim quickly through the water. It had large eyes and a toothed mouth that would have been used to catch small aquatic animals such as insects and crustaceans. Tetrapodophus had a long, slender body with four small, well-developed legs that were similar in shape and size to those of lizards. The legs were positioned relatively far apart on the body, which suggests that the snake was not well adapted for efficient movement on land. It likely spent most of its time in the water or on land near bodies of water. It is an important find for understanding the evolution of snakes, as it provides evidence that snakes evolved from terrestrial lizards with four legs, rather than from aquatic reptiles like mosasaurs, as was previously believed. Arthrodactylus had, compared to the torso length of 22 cm, relatively long wings and especially long wing fingers, perhaps much more so than any other pterodactyloid. The hind limbs are however, weakly developed. Lutodactylus had a wingspan of about 2 meters and would have been a relatively small pterosaur. Its body was covered in short, fur-like structures known as pycnofibers, which were common among early pterosaurs. It had a long, toothed snout that would have been used to catch small fish and other prey.
Brasiliodactylus was a medium-sized pterosaur with a wingspan of approximately 4 meters and a body mass of 10 kilograms. It had a long pointed snout and conical teeth that in the extreme front of the jaws were long, thin and forward pointing. Unlike some other Brazilian pterosaurs, it had no crest on the snout or lower jaw but might have had one on the back of the skull. Amberidactylus can be distinguished from other pterosaurs by a long retroarticular process and a small fossa, or depression, with a roughened bone texture on the splenial bone. In addition, it shows a unique combination of traits, the shelf on the dentary symphysis is deep, the dorsal rim of the symphysis is concave, the jaw is relatively wide, the dentary fossa is short and shallow, and the mandibular rami form a very large angle with the symphysis. These traits are a unique combination of basal and derived characteristics within tapagerity. Lacuso vagus had a wingspan of about 2 meters and a long, slender beak that was lined with numerous small, pointed teeth. Its teeth were specialized for filter feeding, suggesting that it may have fed on small aquatic organisms, such as plankton or small fish. It also had a small, rounded head crest that may have been used for display or species recognition. Tupendactylus navigans may have largely been a terrestrial forager. Examination of a specimen suggests that the pterosaur was capable of flight, but seemingly spent much of its time on the ground thanks to its large crest, longer forelimbs, and neck, only taking short flights to possibly escape from predators. Simultaneously, it was not adapted to the same terrestrial stalking lifestyle as as darkids are believed to have utilized. It was once been suggested that Tepuxuara was a fish eater at the coasts of South America, while some deviant hypotheses include the possibility it was a fruit eater. However, based on its asdarkoid affinities, it was most likely a terrestrial omnivore or carnivore. The closely related Thalassodromius was specialized for larger prey, while both Tepuxuara species lacked such specializations. Also, it may have been diurnal. As a compsognathid dinosaur Ubrajara is expected to have been a small predator, perhaps focusing upon smaller reptiles such as small mammals, lizards, small juveniles of dinosaurs, perhaps even larger invertebrates. At the time of its description Ubrajara is unique amongst the compsognathids due to the elaborate feather covering. This is mainly from a bushy mane of hair-like protofeathers that measured up to 11 cm long over the dorsal vertebrae. Kratoavis had a relatively long, slender beak with a hooked tip, suggesting that it was a carnivorous bird that fed on small animals, such as insects or other small vertebrates. Its wings were relatively short and rounded, indicating that it was probably not a strong flyer and may have spent most of its time on the ground or in trees.
The Alcantara Formation consists primarily of sandstones, mudstones and shales. These sedimentary rocks were formed in a variety of depositional environments, including fluvial, lacustrine and coastal settings. The sedimentary structures found within the formation suggest a complex and dynamic depositional history. The presence of fossilized plants, including ferns and conifers, suggests a lush vegetation cover in the surrounding terrestrial environments. The fauna really resembles to the Egyptian fauna at the very same period, Africa continent was closer so the continents both share the ecosystems. The exact size and morphology of Atlantic apristis can vary depending on the species and the specific fossil specimens found. As a carnivorous predator, it would have primarily fed on a diet of small fish, crustaceans, and other marine invertebrates. Its rostrum with its sharp teeth-like projections would have been used to stun or impale its prey, making it easier to capture and consume. As a predator, Oncopristus fed primarily on fish and other small marine organisms. Its rostrum, armed with numerous sharp teeth, was an effective tool for capturing and immobilizing its prey. It would use its rostrum to slash or impale fish, disabling them before consuming them. The unique rostrum of Oncopristus likely served multiple purposes, including foraging, defense, and possibly even courtship and species recognition. Miliobatis are graceful swimmers and are well adapted for a life in the open ocean. They use their pectoral fins to fly through the water, undulating their wings in a motion reminiscent of birds in flight. This allows them to move swiftly and maneuver with ease. They are primarily bottom feeders, using their specialized teeth to crush and consume their prey. They primarily feed on benthic invertebrates such as crustaceans, mollusks, and small fish. They use their flattened snouts to root through the sediment, exposing buried prey items, and then use their dental plates to crush and ingest them. Stephanotis had a streamlined body with a cartilaginous skeleton, typical of chondrichthians. It likely had a flattened head and a streamlined shape to facilitate efficient swimming in the marine environment. Based on its dental structure, it is believed that it was a carnivorous predator. Lepidotes was a freshwater fish and is known from fossil remains found in various locations around the world. In terms of its ecological role, Lepidotes was a predatory fish. It likely fed on smaller fish, invertebrates, and possibly even small crustaceans or insects found in its freshwater habitat. Lungfish are a group of freshwater fish known for their unique adaptation of possessing both gills and lungs, allowing them to breathe air. As a freshwater fish, Mawsonia inhabited rivers and lakes during the Cretaceous period. It likely occupied a top predatory position in its ecosystem, feeding on smaller fish and possibly other aquatic organisms. The sharp teeth and its large size suggest it was a formidable predator capable of capturing and consuming substantial prey. Mawsonia is notable for its large size, reaching lengths of up to 6 meters and weighing several hundred kilograms. As a member of the sauropod group, Limosaurus likely lived in herds, roaming and foraging together for food. This social behavior may have provided protection against predators and allowed for more efficient foraging in their ancient ecosystems.
Malawasaurus is an African sauropod, but it seems that a species has been found in this place. The exact physical appearance and other specific features of Malawasaurus are not well known due to the limited fossil record. However, based on its classification within the titanosaurs, it can be inferred that it had a relatively small head in proportion to its body and likely possessed a row of small, leaf-shaped teeth for browsing on vegetation. It is believed that Oxalea was a large dinosaur, estimated to have reached lengths of around 12 meters and potentially weighing several tons. Its most distinctive feature was a long, narrow snout filled with conical, serrated teeth, suggesting a piscivorous diet. This indicates that it likely specialized in hunting and feeding on fish in aquatic environments. This animal really looks like the Egyptian Spinosaurus but it seems to have its own genus.